Okay, so before we get started, I wanted to give you sort of an overview of the Agile life cycle so you can see it beginning to end so you understand how the various uh, sessions that we're gonna have fit within that life cycle. So let's take a look at this picture. The first step of the Agile life cycle, or quite frankly, any traditional project life cycle, is initiation. Some people also call it feasibility. This is where you're trying to find out, is this idea even qualified? Should we even do it? Does it return business value? Um, and then you basically go through initiation steps such as identifying ROI justification, coming up with the high level vision, um, identifying the as is, the to be, alternative solution analysis, what solution should we do, uh, should we go with a buy or build, maybe even identifying uh, cost, initial upfront cost, and who do you want as part of the team. Um, you might not know the team members yet, but you're at least uh, thinking about what resources do I need on the project, and possibly even coming up with a high level roadmap. So that's project initiation. Uh, the main goal out of project initiation is for you to know, yes, is this worth doing? Is this feasible and will it provide value? Once you're done with that step, you now go into planning. Now, depending on the size of the project, if this is a program, which is really large, you probably are planning at multiple levels, right? So you're probably doing high level planning and then planning within the teams because you might have multiple teams going on. So multi-team planning. Um, but the one that we're gonna focus on for today is release planning. So what do you do when you're planning? You first gotta come up with the backlog. You gotta brainstorm the stories, start to break them down into smaller chunks. You need to prioritize them. You need to think about non-functional requirements. It's not all just about the functional requirements. They're also non-functional requirements. Now you gotta size them and figure out story points, how big and how small um, is each item. And then you have to figure out dependency, and that's a very important part of our prioritization come up with an initial estimate for velocity, how many points does this team think they can get done within an iteration, and then begin to figure out, well, how many iterations is it gonna to take to get this project done? And we will talk today about a date-driven project, a scope-driven project, or maybe it's just a continuous flow project that doesn't have a date or scope limitation. What is the goal from planning or release planning? The goal is that you have very clear idea around the requirements, you've sized them, prioritized them, sliced them, and you have an idea of the release plan. How many iterations will it take for you to actually get this done? So that will be really important to our project sponsor. And this is the first high level estimates that we'll give. Next, you go into iteration zero. Iteration zero is basically the foundation setup. The foundation, the let me set up the tools, let me configure everything, let me get the servers going. Uh, let me come up with some high level architecture designs. Uh, let me come up with some high level business process. Let me even set up the team room, the team environment, install software, figure out the build process, anything that I consider absolutely must have for iteration one to succeed. Now, you don't wanna make a mistake and spend two, three, four months in iteration zero. That's why we just time box it to an iteration. It is just enough to make iteration one successful. A very important part of iteration zero is that you pre-plan for the next iterations. So if you don't do that in iteration zero, you'll begin to fall behind. So you need to start uh, getting ready for the stories coming up in the following iterations. Development iterations um, or sprints, that's probably what you're most familiar with. This is where the team plans, executes, has a demo, has a direct retrospective in those small time boxes and they do it over and over and over again until they can actually deliver value. Many times some teams uh, execute iterations and release right away. Some teams execute several iterations and then they have a pre-release or hardening iteration and then they move to production, which is what you're seeing over there. So that's a very quick overview of the Agile life cycle and now we are getting ready to actually experience it and see it in practice. <laughs>